Scugog Council makes decision on Scugog Chamber funding request. Dan Kearns, The Standard. Scugog. After much discussion and deliberation, Scugog Council made a decision regarding the Scugog Chamber of Commerce's funding request. At a meeting on Monday, May 9th, councillors voted to authorize a grant of $6,500 to the Scugog Chamber of Commerce to promote events in Port Perry and the Shop Where You Live initiative and to have the township's treasurer and CAO negotiate a loan arrangement with the chamber, if required, only to facilitate the repayment of the federal COVID loan, so the organization is able to maintain the grant portion allowed if the repayment is made by the end of 2023. The grant will be funded from the township's 2021 surplus. Council also made sure to include the loan will be interest-bearing and be repaid in full within two years of the loan. Ward 3 Councillor Robert Rock had originally suggested having the loan arrangement be considered in January 2023. What I think would be a better use would be to review this in January of 2023 to see what anticipated shortfall the Chamber may have in repaying the loan, he explained. However, Ward 1 Councillor Ian McDougall was concerned this would leave the Chamber in the lurch without knowing if the municipality Will support them should they fall short of the funds needed to pay back the COVID loan. At a previous meeting, Terry Voss and Michael Phillip requested a $6,500 grant from the township for the chamber to bring back many of their regular events and a loan of up to $31,000 to help with economic growth. If we're not successful at getting township funding, we will have to relook at the chamber's involvement in organization in Scugog. We have cut our costs down in the last two years to keep our head above water. But we're not prepared to work under a situation where we cannot be successful and self-supporting, Terry Voss told members of Scugog Council at the time. Following Council's decision, Scugog Chamber executives appeared pleased with the decision. We would like to say we're happy with the decision which was made in our favour at Council yesterday, and we look forward to continuing our collaborative working relationship with the Township of Scugog read an email statement from the Executive Director, Carrie Ann Large. A number of local names registered for the 2022 municipal election so far. Dan Kearns, The Standard. North Durham, Kawartha Lakes. A number of local residents have already registered their names to run in the 2022 municipal elections. In Scugog, current Ward 1 Councillor Ian McDougall has registered to run for Regional Councillor. Blackstock resident Harold Wright is running to become Ward 4 Councillor. Ivo Fonotti is running for Ward 5 Councillor position. In Uxbridge, Dave Barton is running for re-election as the township's mayor. Current Ward 3 Councillor Bruce Garrod is looking to become the regional councillor. Pam Beach is running for re-election in her Ward 1 seat. Two people have registered to run for the Ward 2 seat, Gordon Shreve and former Councillor Pat Malloy. Zed Pickering has registered to run for the Ward 3 Councillor position. Willie Pop is running for re-election as Ward 4 Councillor. Todd Snooks is also looking for re-election as Ward 5 Councillor, but he will be challenged for the role by Christine McKenzie. Two current members of Brock Township Council have registered to run for Mayor. They are current Regional Councillor Ted Smith and Ward 3 Councillor Walter Schumer. Running for Regional Councillor is current Ward 1 Councillor Michael Jubb. Peter Frank has registered to run for Ward 1 Councillor. Angela Canavan of Cannington is looking to become Ward 3 Councillor. Crea Pettingdeal is running for re-election as Ward 4 Councillor. Lynn Campbell is also looking to remain as a member of Brock Council as Ward 5 Councillor. Meanwhile, there is currently a three-way race for Mayor in Kawartha Lakes. Current Councillors Doug Elmsley and Pat Dunn are both running for Mayor, as is Jolie Scheidler-Benz. Pat Warren is looking to become Ward 2 Councillor. Mike Perry has registered to run for the role of Ward 3 Councillor. Ron Ashmore is looking to be re-elected as Ward 6 Councillor, but he will be challenged by Gerard Gillison. The municipal elections will be held in Ontario this October. Port Perry Walk for Dog Guides on May 29, 2022. Courtney McClure, The Standard. Scugok. Join the Pet Value Port Perry Annual Walk for Dog Guides on Sunday, May 29, 2022. 
The annual Walk for Dog Guides happens every year on the last Sunday of May. To participate in this event, you can register online on the Pet Value Walk for Dog Guides website or in person on the day of the event. Donations and sponsors are very much appreciated. There is no registration fee or minimum donation. Registration starts at 10 a.m. and the walk starts at 11 a.m. Participants will start in Palmer Park and end at Old Flame Brewing Company, located on Perry Street. Old Flame is also dog friendly. After the walk, there will be a barbecue lunch and ice cream. Jonathan Van Bilsen will emcee the event. You do not have to own a dog to join the walk. The event is family friendly and everyone is welcome and asked to register for the walk. I have seen dog guides working, explained Sue Bryan, a member of the Port Perry Walk for explained Sue Brain, a member of the Port Perry Walk for Dog Guides group. The difference it makes in a person is really amazing. Ms. Brain is a dog lover and owns a dog herself, a golden retriever named Susie. She said, seeing the dogs in action and helping their handlers is a wonderful sight to experience. Ms. Brain is encouraging everyone interested in learning what dog guides do to visit the Walk for Dog Guides website. I like to say, as soon as you say dogs, people pull out their wallets anyway because we all love dogs, she said. When someone receives a dog guide, they do not have to pay for the dog, but it costs about $35,000 to breed, feed, and train puppies raised to be dog guides. Lions Foundation of Canada Dog Guides is where many dog guides are trained in Ontario. The facility is located in Oakville, Ontario. There are seven types of dog guides trained at the Oakville facility. These dog guides can be used to assist people with hearing loss, loss of sight, and many other disabilities and challenges. Ivo Finati and Ms. Brain organized a small group and started the Port Perry Walk for Dog Guides. Sue Brain has been a participant in the Port Perry Walk for Dog Guides for about five years. So far, the group has had two in-person and two virtual walks. This year's walk will be their third in-person walk. The past few walks had been hosted online because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Ms. Brain said she was Ms. Brain said she is thrilled this year's walk for dog guides can be held in person. We are really thrilled this year to be back walking with our dogs in beautiful downtown Port Perry, said Ms. Brain. Walk for dog guides is a national walk Canadians take part in from all across Canada. Each year, there are about 300 different walks for dog guides happening on the same day. Organizers from across Canada encourage everyone to support the dog guide walk by registering, donating, and participating. To learn more about registration, donations, and support, you can visit www.walkfordogguides.com. Oxbridge residents hear from provincial candidates during forum event. Dan Kearns, The Standard, Oxbridge. Residents of Uxbridge heard from three of their riding's provincial election candidates during an event held on Wednesday, May 11th. The candidates forum was held at the Uxbridge Arena and Community Centre and was hosted by Uxbridge Cosmos. The candidates in attendance included incumbent Conservative MPP Peter Bethlen Falvey, Khalid Ahmed from the NDP, and Abraham Daniel from the Liberal Party. The candidates were first asked about what had been learned from the pandemic and how they would ensure the province was ready for the next one. Mr. Ahmed said the pandemic exposed how the province's health care system was already on its knees, and the government needs to ensure nurses are happy and are not leaving the province. He added the NDP will hire 30,000 nurses and give personal support workers paid sick days and will make sure seniors stay in their homes with dignity. Mr. Bethlen Falvey stressed the importance of investing in hospital and health care related infrastructure and the need for modern beds and hospitals. We made a commitment almost a year and a half ago to hire 27,000 new nurses and personal support workers in long-term care facilities. That's happening, Mr. Bethlen Falvey added. The Standard asked the candidates how their government would help the local tourism industry rebound after the pandemic. We have to promote Ontario. We are an amazing province. We have a lot of greenery. We have to make sure people can come here and enjoy it. We have to work and talk with business and stakeholders about how we can make it possible 
and what needs to be addressed to ensure we can attract tourism. We have an amazing platform on arts and culture, Mr. Ahmed explained. Mr. Bethlen Falvey said Premier Ford has been promoting the province across the border in the U.S. He added the Ontario government's plan to stay open is so critical to help people and business feel comfortable moving forward. Affordability was also a key issue brought up during the forum. Our families are suffering. Poverty levels are getting bigger and bigger. Doug Ford's rich friends are getting richer, Mr. Daniel stated. We are increasing the basic minimum wage to $16. Mr. Ahmed said affordability had been a key topic he's heard from residents. Life is just getting harder. We need to ensure there is a minimum wage increase. We need to ensure people on ODSP and supportive programs get an increase. He also stressed the importance of implementing proper rent control and lowering hydro rates. Mr. Bethlehem Falvey shared how the current government is working to rebuild Ontario's economy and will focus on supporting workers and supporting people right across the spectrum. Doug Ford is getting the job done. Doug Ford is putting shovels in the ground. We're building Ontario. We are rebuilding this economy after two tough years and supporting every Ontarian, Mr. Bethlehem Falvey stated. One resident asked the candidates how they would balance the need for rural and urban growth with the need to protect the greenbelt and farmland. Mr. Danielle attacked the use of Minister's Zoning Orders, MZO, to build developments on ecologically sensitive or protected lands and said he cries when he sees farmland being sold to developers. Mr. Ahmed said, We cannot rip out trees and go through the greenbelt just to build a highway and stated the NDP would protect farmland and the greenbelt from developers. He also noted the importance of consulting farmers on future developments. Mr. Bethlen Falvey explained the government is listening to farmers and defended the use of MZOs by saying these orders are only issued at the request of the municipalities. Humor can help with your loved one's quality of life. Tina Y. Gerber, special to the standard. My mother had a good sense of humor, always laughing and joking around after being diagnosed with dementia and Parkinson's. Individuals with dementia may have lost a part of their memory, but they still appreciate humor and laughter. I can hear both my granny and mother laughing to this very day. Even when mother had difficulty communicating, she liked watching people, and she would laugh at the little things. I was most surprised with the rapport she had with her caregivers while living at the home. Her laughter was like a breath of fresh air in what was a very stressful situation. To admit to it, I was a tad jealous, at times, of her support workers. Every Christmas, my sister would buy me something to make me laugh, which in turn made Mother laugh. Her last year living at home with us was no different. Her laughter was always one of the family highlights at Christmas time. One time, when Mother was attempting to put on her socks, she was getting so frustrated, mostly because she had already put on her shoes. I stepped in and took her sock and explained how to put it on properly. She watched me intently as I began to put the sock on her hand. The corners of her mouth turned up as a smile lit her face. At that moment, the universe began to sing. Older people may likely use humor as a coping mechanism. Humor can help caregivers understand and support people with dementia to alleviate stress and help improve their quality of life. I have so many wonderful memories, not only of my mother, but the many residents who struggle daily with their routines. We should remember, laughter is a non-pharmacologic way to deal with dementia and for most stresses. Just stop and think, can you imagine if everything was strange and confusing to you? By using humor, you would be able to lighten the mood, hopefully creating a normal and safe environment. Sometimes, that laughter will remove the fog of fear if only for a moment. The Bible has no specific passages which address dementia, but a major key to coping with dementia and any other degenerative disease is to remember, no matter what your circumstances, God's character does not change. His promises still hold true. God does not say all things are good, such as dementia, but rather, God says, He works good in all things. What gives me comfort is, knowing God is still in control. With dementia, you may become uncertain and confused interacting with the people around you. But God knows you. That is such a comforting fact. 
I was always worried that Mother would not find her way to heaven. But even though she forgot who she was mentally, in Isaiah 49.16, God declares to Jerusalem, Your name is written on the palm of my hand. God's love never changes, and when he came as Christ, he took the nail wounds on the cross in his hands. They reflect an eternal reminder of love and care for us. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio for The Standard Newspaper. 